so we're back. I did a lot off screen because I was just trying to learn how to play this game without just eating shit the whole time and it being a really boring playthrough. And I kind of got it. But now that I'm recording, I won't get it. And I did a bit of everything, finished the beginning, you know, like, and I've got pretty close to unlocking the final thing. So we're just going to mess around in the modern era and do a bit from all of the ones we haven't seen so far. Just to kind of show, because it's, it's been pretty interesting playing these ones up, actually. Uh, 899 track day. Multistrada. Let's just go for this. And I haven't driven the Multistrada yet. So I've unlocked all of the modern era stuff, which goes up to about 2015 models because this is a 2016 game. So, um, yeah, there's a, a Diavel or Diavel. I don't know how to say it. Italian for devil, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's got all the Panigale and other super sports from the, around this era. The Multistrada and the Scramblers. And Lord, did they go through and model every version of the Scrambler and give it identical... Uh, identical uh, stats, making me wonder... Wait, are they all the same in real life? What the fuck went on there? That was terrible. I'm gonna start again. That was that was embarrassing. What the shit? I got on better at the game. Immediately just falls off the fucking bike. What the hell? Start. I'll talk less. It's the first time I've driven one of these. Ah, oh, he's dead. I killed a guy. His bike's still going. Oh, I don't like this bike. I do not like this bike at all. Oh. Not, not getting it. It feels good, but I'm not getting it. Only adventure bike, I think, in the whole game, though, so... What am I doing? The moment I put the recorder on, man. I've been doing the last couple of days, I've been playing it fine. Shouldn't have picked the multi strata as the first choice. Should have picked something I'd already driven. Give myself the benefit. There we go. Cool bike. I like the noises the modern Ducatis make. Oh, these guys are just eating shit on their own. That makes me feel better. The AI is bad. Oh, I didn't like that. Throttle control. First thing I learned, throttle control. All of the more powerful bikes, you just slam the heavy throttle going around the corner. Of course they wipe out from underneath you, because that's what would happen. going terribly. Oh damn it. Helps if I break. Helps if I fucking break. Dip shit. Come on.
My cat's running around underneath the TV being a huge asshole <laughs> because he can see I'm recording. He does this every time. If I leave my laptop unattended, he also does this. No, it's the moment I start talking, I start fucking up again. Go as wide as it physically fucking lets me because I'm an idiot. If I leave my laptop unattended, he sits on the laptop, which is a standard cat thing, but it's a MacBook, so you can't lock the keyboard. So it just fucks up the computer and puts all the accessibility options on and then bricks the computer into turning off. And it's like, great, thanks for breaking my very expensive laptop I don't have the money to replace. And the amount of times I've shouted him, get off of it, get off. And he's just gone, oh, I'll just do it again. And it's just like, oh my god, I swear to god. If he breaks it, I'm gonna get pissed. Shit. Helps if I don't just bounce from one fucking wall to the other. Jesus fucking Christ. Stop. Stop. Oh my god! Fucking asshole. No, fuck this. Fuck off. Just swaying all over the place. Can we do anything that I can actually fucking drive? Oh, the load times on this thing is just like... It loads twice every time you do anything. And you open a new menu and it will load and autosave and then load up the menu again. Like, it's autosaved twice for that period of time. It's just like, what the fuck? Can you calm down? I didn't try that one. I didn't try that one. I did a load of them off screen, look, I did a gold, the gold, look, I can fucking do it the moment I put this recorder on, my cat acts like a prick, jumps in front of the TV and I can't do anything. Time attack. Single race, I don't fucking know. I'll do a time attack and I've never done them, I don't go, uh, 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 you're shit at this, so... press the X button about 30 seconds ago and it's loading and auto-saving and loading and auto-saving and it's like, oh my god, this was obviously not designed to be fast. I can't expect anything better from this, to be honest, like... Get out of the way. Pootling along. Oh yeah, sorry. I was going too slow, wasn't I, dick? Look. Look. Just all piling by me. Then they just slow down to a, like, impossibly low speed around every corner. You're just like, okay. Then they'll just all overtake me like I'm doing 30 in a minute. What the hell? You can't catch them on the streets, these AI. But on the corners you can catch them, because they go around the corners like grannies. Alright, first gear, and I just manual handle it around the corner. You're like, okay. But you just slamming it into fucking sick straight away down the streets. 
Whatever, man. <laughs> sure. What am I doing that's not foot down in the streets? I don't understand. That was quite slow, actually. That was a slow corner take. I don't like that one. Mm. Yeah, it's got a little more like you can put the foot down on this one. Doesn't pull out as easily the monster. It's the super sports and like honestly the monster in the Diavel or Diavel, whatever the fuck. You can really slam them around the corners and you can put your foot down coming out straight away even while you're still turning and it won't pull. That's me with foot down there and it just bucked a little bit. It's not sliding out from under me. But the multi strata, that was the first time I drove that. Holy fucking shit is just what? It's heavy but it's high up and it's just kind of like oh. So they got the physics I guess. Down? I don't think it's down. They managed to show a representation of how the physics are very different between each bike type, you know? Like the Scrambler feels different from these naked bikes and the naked bikes feel different from the super sports and shit. So they got that down. Kinda? I wouldn't know. Like I've driven any of these. I'm not a rich man. I'm a poor boy. See, now I'm winning. It was clearly the adventure bike's fault. Clearly. I've never been a fan of adventure bikes. Like, honestly, just the style and look of them, they make me think, wow, this doesn't scream like nerd. <laughs> like, you know, uh, like, no offense to adventure bike lovers. I get why you like them, they're practical, but it's like, you know, oh, I want to buy something cool. I know, better make it as practical as possible. Where's my saddle brags? It's like, you know, it's a bit like, okay, <laughs> you're ruining it. It's like the people who like the Harley Davidson, like, with the fucking Bluetooth and the surround sound speakers and shit. It's like, come on, man, you're ruining it. Sports are all the way. Now I'm going to get anyone who does like motorcycles bitching at me and saying, yeah, but no, 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 it's like, yeah, I'm an idiot and I'm in my 20s and I like to drive things fast and I don't like having loads of shit. That's why I like naked bikes and like cruisers that are like sportster style cruisers and things like that and like cafe races because they're stripped down. No bullshit. But like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I need somewhere to put my helmet. Better put a big fuck off thing on the back so it looks stupid and the lines are ruined. Like, oh god. Just carry the helmet. <laughs> Just carry the helmet. Is it really that difficult? Carry the fucking helmet. You're ruining it. You're making it look like shit. <laughs> like, yeah, I always say this. Oh wow. Why am I gonna keep my helmet secure? Someone's gonna nick it. Who's gonna nick a motorcycle helmet? <laughs> no one. I can almost always guarantee unless you live in Asia. Not everyone you work with is driving a motorcycle, and if you live in Asia, nobody's wearing a helmet. <laughs> so, like, you know, no one's gonna take yours. No one takes safety gear from you. Unless it's nice, you know, like a Shoei or something. Just makes it look like shit. Way to ruin it, you know? Uh, like it's a, I'm being a bit of a purist asshole about something that I'm too poor to really have an actual stake in. So <laughs> it's like, well, who gives a shit? I have like a fucking, I have nothing, man. Nothing. Over here in China, one of the Chinese people I know, he said to me, oh, I'm getting my bike license. And I was like, oh, really? How are you doing it? because he can't drive bikes, like he falls off of them every time he drives a motorcycle, he's injuring himself and he doesn't wear, because he's Chinese, any PPE, he's, in, he's on it in his shorts, right, he's on it in his shorts, and I'm like, then he like guts his fucking knee off of the bone almost, because he just drops the bike whilst going around a corner, and then he gets hit by free cars because the Chinese don't stop for anybody. They just drive right up to you, take a photo of you, and then honk their horn at you. <laughs> oh, I, I got the thing. 
I want to show off the the die of Diavel. Oh. Um. Yeah. Hang on. While oh, it's loading, I'm going to put the aircon on because my laptop's like, no! No! <laughs> it's like. Or not. Hello? There we go. <laughs> So let's see what we've unlocked here. A cool bike. Also a cool bike. Also a cool bike. That looks like it will kill me. And that one. Oh, that's nice. They're all really nice. Great. We may go to that later. But I'm I I might cry. <laughs> Uh, time attack on the Panigale S. I don't think I've tried that yet. So these are all S category. The Almeria. The other was nice. That was scary. The Des the Desbos of Uchi was quite scary. Uh, I was going to try the Super Ligera. Oh, okay, yeah, so it's uh, E-Class, the one I was thinking of. We'll do them in a minute. Uh, French Riviera, Canto Temple, or I think we just did that track, so that, let's do the Riviera. That's what we just drove. Uh, so we got like a few choices here. Some of these are like in the 2K era. I drove them screen. I drove that, it was pretty good fun. Tree Glory. And I drove this. So um, I'll, I'll show them at some point. I drove the street fire, that was pretty good. Um, ugh, Multistrada, fuck off. Opening my thing to a bad thing straight away. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna show this, just to show it. <laughs> they really don't give you enough tracks at the late stage. They don't give you enough tracks. So it's like, you, if you like to bike, you're gonna end up missing out on other bikes. Because... You want to play the one you like. Uh, yeah, so this guy, man, is trying to do his uh, motorbike license. And I was like, well, you do need to practice, really. Uh, and he's like, well, I'm allowed to whilst I'm learning go on the road. And he keeps wrecking his shit. And the reason he's wrecking his shit is he's learning on a tricycle with a big tractor trailer thing on the back because they have these in China where it's essentially a big pallet of a pickup truck with a freewheel base and a motorcycle on the front and you can pass the test by doing the following turning on said tractor hybrid thing on a hill and driving away so basically knowing how to set the clutch so that you don't stall the bike on a hill so it doesn't roll back. And take a, what I assume has to be a pretty fucking wide slalom <laughs> because you're having to get a tractor trailer through it uh, and you can't fall off the bike if you stop So, because it's through the base. <laughs> so unless you're doing something really wrong, in which case you could turn over a car or a van, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, he's learning on that, and if there's one person in the world, no offense to him, that shouldn't be learning with basically all of the training wheels on, it's him, because he cannot balance the bike. It's like, maybe someone with more experience than I even could do that and go, yeah, but I know how to drive a bike, I got a license in another country. Even I would feel like that's not enough, you know? But he's like, no, 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 man, they said they take foreigners and that they speak enough English, you can do it. You could do the test. It's like, I probably can. I'm like, how long? How many lessons do I need to take? They said, oh, you could just go in for the, the uh, test straight away if they think you're good enough. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm good enough. You know what I mean? Because I can drive a motorcycle, a geared one. But I can't drive it well. I can drive it okay. I can get it around the corner, and I can do pretty much all of the, 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 the slow maneuvers that I need to to pass the test. It's just I fuck up when someone tells me to do a specific thing. 
and everyone says, it's weird. Um, this is what I get for talking. So I'm trying to break heavy and it feels like it's falling out from underneath me from doing that, so there we go. Pay attention to the road, motherfucker. Uh, I'll finish my story once we get onto a street. Because <laughs> I'm like, this is further proof that I'm not really prepared. I go wide a lot. Um, although this isn't exactly like it. the foot. This wouldn't be the bike I picked up first, <laughs> first of all. Uh, second of all, um, ah, this guy. Motherfucker! Knock me off my line, you little dick. Fucking AI. Proof the AI are out to get us, man. Oh, this asshole. I'm gonna go knock him off his bike because I'm feeling sadistic. Or not. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, like, um, while I could pass that, I don't feel like I'd be safe on the road on a motorcycle um, with just that experience, but I probably could bumble my way through life because I currently am on an e-bike unlicensed because you don't need a license for an electric moped here. So I got one pretty cheap and I've just been whizzing around on that with no PPE on because I'm a fucking idiot. They gave me a helmet. That's a really nice helmet. It's an all black thing. Uh, that's a full face, which I should be wearing, but no one wears them here, and it's hot at the moment, so I'm just like, oh, just bumble around and say I've got no protective shit for something like this happening. Try the brake, motherfucker, there we go. Oh, no. Not enough brake, fuck me. Ugh. I was doing so well on this and really enjoyed this bike, and now I can't make it do anything, including going around the corner. But I think the one I was on before, it was on pretty wide corners. It was the Sierra Nevada stage, so this has a lot of hairpins. to break on the corner, maybe that will help. Or just mount the curb like a fucking moron. Yeah, so I've probably been this one again. Um, we'll see. See if I can pull it back in the final lap. Nice sounding bike. Very expensive. I don't even know if they still make them. In China they don't have these models, I don't think. When I went there, they had Monsters and they had the Panigale, which all have, I think, the same kind of rough CC range. They had the Monster 696, though. There's a lot of, like, restrictive things on fun in China. Fuck's sake. Oh, it does tuck in much harder than I was giving it. it the controller vibrates, so you're like, oh shit, I'm gonna fall off if I break that hard, and then it just swoops in and goes, no, you're fine. And I'm like, the fuck then? So it still went wide there, and you saw it tried to pull out there. That's because of poor throttle control again. I know what I'm doing wrong, but it's not stopping me from doing it wrong. Should have come out for that corner, Jesus. Slow down to a crawl there. Didn't come off though. Uh, yeah, so I forget what I was saying there, about the bikes and licenses. I could, a lot of people are saying, well, when you've got money and stuff and the virus shit stops being a problem, you should do it. It's like, yeah, well, I'm going to, aren't I, because I like motorbikes, but the hassle, the racist level of bureaucracy in this country. I had this poor chick, man, girl I work with. She was like, she's young and Chinese, so she has no idea how racist this country is to foreigners 
And so every time you know you meet a Chinese person outside of China, and they're like, "Oh, you need to treat us," it's just like, "Well, yeah, you do. You need to treat them like they're actually fucking human beings." But just a firm reminder: them and their entire system is incredibly racist to outsiders. So, yeah. If they're bitching about this, the Western system not being very tolerant towards them, you could be like, eh, not being funny, but you guys are kind of dirtbags. <laughs> like, you know, trust me. <laughs> like, you know, the, like, here's my anecdote for the day of how the government was mean to me and me personally, and how I'm probably not allowed to complain about it, but I am on YouTube. <laughs> so... Yeah, uh, we've got to get our e-bikes license plated because shocker, if you let people walk around unlicensed on unplated vehicles, a lot of accidents and hit and runs happen, especially because you're technically allowed to drive an e-bike drunk, and they can't track you if you do something like run over a person whilst drunk on an e-bike, and they're capable, my one's capable, of top speed of 50 kilometers an hour, so they're not slow, <laughs> you can do damage to somebody hitting them at that speed. Um, and yourself, and vehicles, and property. So they decided they had the bright idea of actually making at least the bikes be plated and trying to phase out the ones that do 50 kilometers an hour in the next few years. Except they're also trying to bully foreigners off of the vehicles entirely because obviously we're the perpetrator of all crime in their country because the Chinese are the master race, don't forget. Oh. <laughs> That's what I get for complaining about the, the fascist way this country is run. It is literally a dictatorship. It is equivalent to the Third Reich. They literally have propaganda. They literally have headlines that basically say the foreign threat is here. Put them in the gulags. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not even really exaggerating that much. But anyway, um, this, they, they decided the bright idea now is that they need to plate them because maybe that will curb the problem and people will be able to at least track which bike ran over their granny and maybe they can suddenly look at the stats and go huh it wasn't just the whites and blacks <laughs> it's the Meituan drivers who drive in pedestrianized zones <laughs> but like whatever um, so yeah it's a convenient little app if you're a Chinese ID card holder if you're anybody else, go to the traffic police. The traffic police will say, where the fuck's your driving license? And it's like, does anybody else in this country have a driving license? No, but you have white skin. And this took us a whole day and 29 to 30 kilometers of me driving around and around the country, uh, the city I'm living in, with this poor Chinese girl on my back, on the back of my bike. Who had to go to work, calling up the various government agencies saying, where the fuck do I have to take this foreigner to actually get the plate? And they're like, oh, go to this police station. The police station says, no, white, fuck off. So we go to another police station, which is literally on the out li outer limits of where I live. Like, it's literally, you're about to go into another, like, outskirt city of the country. Like, you know, it's not even remotely the same country, uh, same city. Uh, let's try something a little more nimble and then fuck up again. Um, I want to try this. Uh, 899. These were quite fun. Let's look at how what their handling is. See, the handling difference is quite, quite big, quite big. Let's just give myself the best advantage possible. Eight four eight, eight nine nine, which is the biggest number. That's clearly an indicator of good things. Oh, I don't want to drive them. Let's do the eight nine nine because I don't think I've driven it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, not going great lately. Uh, because we had to drive all the way out just to get to a building site which looked empty and 
then some officious motherfucker in a little uniform and a pot belly just screams at me, get the fuck out of this place, I don't want to serve you because of your skin colour. Because apparently the bureaucracy can do that in this country and nobody fucking fires them or anything. They don't even get, they just go, oh, I don't want to serve him, foreigner. And apparently that's acceptable in this country. Keep that in mind <laughs> when we say the West is backwards. You know, don't see... I hope people in our country who aren't the majority aren't turned away at the post office and the police saying, fuck off, I don't care. Uh, but this guy did. My friend who was helping me out was so angry, she called up the local government and screamed at them for a good 10 minutes on the phone. And I was like, can we just go? My battery's running low. <laughs> like, because it's my e-bike, right? They have a range of about 30 to 50 kilometers and we've done 30 already. We end up in the middle of fucking nowhere on the way back and there's this dusty ass Mad Max style gas station that has a generator and we have to pay a little bit of like two quays, about 20 pence for 20 minutes of uh, borrowing it for <laughs> to charge my bike up so that we can get home. <laughs> I'm just like, this is dumb. <laughs> She's like, yeah, it's fucking dumb. But what was scary was, um, what was really scary was, um, she called up the government ranting out and saying, this is ridiculous, like, you're literally being racist, I fucking hate you kind of thing, this is bullshit. Oh, I don't know what she said, she said something in Chinese, and I don't, I don't speak the language well enough to when they're really screaming at one another at high speed, but she was, she was ripping into them, I could tell that from the volume, and the way she looked, and her face, and the fact that she said in English, I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, then they called her back on the way back and she was like, I don't want to answer it because they're probably like, I hear you're having problems with the way our government is run. Maybe you would like to come to this black site and talk about the problems you're having with our government because <laughs> that's how they deal with complainers in this country. Um, yeah, so she was like, I'm not answering and I'm like, I really hope I see her at work soon because sweating intensifying. They probably get a lot of complaints that are literally just people saying, what the fuck, man, this is bullshit. But, like, it's unlike the West, where they have to pretend to at least give a shit. In this country, they'll just say, you're causing a problem. We don't like problems. Ah, oh, I'm glad I learned how to rewind. Jeez. Oh, I slowed right down there. What happened? Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Turns out I'm bad at motorcycles. But yeah, like that was a that was a trip. And then everyone was like, I thought, and it's predictable that they would be really racist and only allow uh, the Chinese with Chinese ID card holders even, which is basically the Chinese. <laughs> like uh, this guy, get the fuck off my back wheel, you ass. I know I slid into him. <laughs> I am not AI, so I win. Oh, it helps if I put my foot down. <laughs> Why are they overtaking me? Oh, I'm using half the throttle. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. Uh, but what's new? Um, so yeah, uh, moving from less risky shores of how they're literally an unopposed fascist dictatorships that nobody's doing anything about because they have economics strength at the moment. Kind of worrying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, and now everyone's saying to me, you should get your license, your real bike license. And I'm like, so I can get stopped by every racist cop in this country. Cool. And have my bike stolen because they can just take your bike from you for no reason other than I suspect he stole it because of his skin color. Awesome! Cut to that famous quote, white men don't know what it's like to be under attack. <laughs> Those people should come and live in fucking China for a while and see how they pull up with that. Because <laughs> it's bad. It's real bad. And they're trying to phase out all gas power by fucking 2040, thus ruining most of my fun. But, you know, I can live with that because that's probably a good thing. Because, you know, gas, power, oil-powered shit. Oh, uh, you know. 
as long as UK is still making nice bikes and other companies like Harley and that. They're trying to, aren't they? They made a wired thing. I haven't looked at it yet. And a lot of American stuff at the moment you can't get in China because that business deal broke down and literally that means bye-bye American goods forever until they make the deals come back again. Because like when Trump did that, that was that. Oh, bye-bye Harley-Davidson garage. It was nice seeing you. <laughs> that was all that, that was all that was written for that so <laughs> like you know when you're in a country that's not like a major trade hub or like relies on trade from multiple sole sources it means you just lose the ability to get that thing if that come, country stops trading with you entirely it's not like oh hey can I trade with Germany though and they have a line in this you know what I mean it's like um no Bye-bye America as a trade market in China. Bye-bye Indian and uh, Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Unless they're privately owned Harley-Davidson stock, in which case the owner can still sell them, but then he can't get any new ones. And that's that. Bye-bye distribution. I think. Because they all shut down around me anyway around that time. Some have started to come back, but like real slow. And it's a lot of second hand. And Triumph, no Triumphs in this country, which is funny, because Triumphs are made somewhere near here at least. They were made in China, and now they're being made somewhere else. A lot of Triumphs, like the factories, um, I think it's Taiwan, I'm not really sure. Uh, they're assembled. Uh, yeah, I've seen one Triumph Bonneville and a guy tried to sell me a second-hand Triumph Bonneville with a significant amount of miles on the kilometers on the clock for 200,000 RMB, so 20,000 pounds to 22,000 pounds for a second-hand example of, I believe it was a 2017 Triumph Bonneville in metallic grey. And I was like, he's like, can't get them here, can't get them here. And it's like, so what you're telling me is you're selling me a heavily used or fairly decent where Bonneville where I'm never going to get parts for it for that much how would I repair it if it broke because you know no parts distribution in this area or well, service I can't fix it if it breaks I'm not that confident my mechanics lucky if I could even change the tire I don't think I could on a bike. I don't think it's that easy on a bike. I might be wrong. I often am. Yeah, so it kind of sucks in some parts. And it's not just China uh, for that kind of stuff. You go to a certain country and they're like, what's that man? You want this Italian bike? Oh, we don't have anything to do with Italy and Italian trade over here. You're going to have trouble getting that bike. You know, that's that. That's you. Done. Boom. Not getting that bike. You have to just get what's available. And it really makes you appreciate that the West, we get a lot of stuff. We get a lot of stuff. And we're allowed to walk the street without being spat at, <laughs> regardless of race, mostly. Um, yeah. Really shocking, actually. You really start to see how bad people are when you, you encounter other people of different backgrounds, you start to really realize how people are quite asshole -ish, you know? I, I, I don't want to be mean, I've met some great people abroad, but like I've also realized, wow, there are some really bad people everywhere. Not just my home country, everywhere. They're just everywhere, man. And you're just like, oh, okay, well, I guess that makes sense. But they believe the horse shit. Like, they believe that, like, you know, so maybe they're told propaganda that foreigners are criminals and are all rich and you should steal from them and you should ostracize them. They will straight up, that's an example. That might not happen, I don't know. I don't watch propaganda <laughs> for another country or for my own country. Um, and they will just straight up go, that's true. And to this day, I still get people saying to me, do you have AIDS because you're a foreigner? Uh, Believe that I do drugs because I'm a foreigner, 
and believe I'm probably committing crimes all the time for being a foreigner. I was like, not really, unless you include bureaucratic shit, which is like, you know, you exist in our country, well then you're committing a crime. Okay, but I have all my visas here. No, sir, you are a criminal now. Okay, cool story, bro. Um, they just they just say things and believe it's fine, honestly. And you are treated like subhuman filth all the time for not being Chinese in China. It's awful. Um, but like everyone goes, you're really rich, and it's literally like I've been laid off essentially for four months. Last month. I was working for a whole month and they paid me the equivalent of 12 pounds for that month and went, you're rich, you can fucking deal with it. And that was my boss. And then when I complained, she said, I'm your boss, fucking deal with it. And I was like, that's why I left and got a new job. I told my new boss and he said, holy shit, what is wrong with her? I was like, she's Chinese and she believes the propaganda. So she thinks it's fine to literally turf me out on the street because I'm wealthy and I own half of Kent because I'm a foreigner. That's how that works. I'm British, so I probably own London. I'm probably related to the Queen. And, um, yeah, I've been on uh, a date recently with this asshole bitch chick. She's awful. And, like, I w I've not had any money for basically four months except my savings because I don't blow it all the time. And she's like, oh, I'm going to be so glad when we get back to work. I'm going to be so rich. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll be glad when I get back to work, too. And she was like, oh, you'll get richer. Like, really contemptive. And I'm like, I live off of pot noodles, and you still have a job. So, fuck you. <laughs> you know what I mean? And she was just really aggressively mean about it and, like, really rude and, like, real, like, oh, you know, you earn so much more than me, it's unfair. And I was like, well, I do live in a country where they really don't want me to be here, you know? And so I guess that's, like, the compensation. But then, they, like, every person you meet is trying to scam you. Like, you're paying triple what everyone else is paying for everything all the time. And they're like, well, you deserve it. Oh, my God. I could tell some fucking stories, man. The funny one is when you literally say something that would indicate that you know exactly what their bullshit is and then they still do their bullshit. That always hits me as like, wow, you really are not in that intelligent. Like... They're kind of people who scam anyway. They're not very bright. Um, I want to try that one, but that one's got the, the big number. Uh, let's try the Super Ligera. Way to sell a luxury sports vehicle to me. Put Super Ligera on it. And I'm like, that must mean it's good. Because I'm an idiot. Yeah, like the latest thing is like, so I've been in a bunch of relationships with Chinese and Vietnamese girls and other girls of various backgrounds, but I've had experience dating and or being in a relationship with them and I work with them all the time. So I'm friends with a lot of people and I know they're kind of like the way they think on average or like they're kind of cultural assumptions and things. So I'm kind of like, okay, that's that's how they think. Uh, well, that's their assumption on this subject. And, like, I can tell you without a doubt that, like, well, I've been in proper relationships before and I'm not married, but, like, you'll always meet a couple of Chinese girls who are, like, think you're stupid and have never had sex before because a lot of them are virgins because they can't keep a boyfriend and they can't keep a girlfriend and they don't know how to talk to each other. It's kind of like Japan. They're kind of just so closed off from one another at times that they just never get a partner. And if they do, their parents start telling them to marry them and have children straight away, so they kind of keep it quiet if they do. 
for a while until they have certain um, very strict parenting and patriarchal society here where they expect marriage very quickly. I'm in a relationship with, I've been in relationships with a bunch of girls before here. But you'll always meet a couple who you're literally saying, you know, I have been in a relationship with someone from your background and culture before. I know exactly what the rules are there for. <laughs> like, you know, I know what your parents are expecting, but then they'll just sit there and gaslight you for a whole day. And they're like, no, no, in my culture, no sex before marriage. And you have to give me millions of fucking our credits, you know, like our currency. And you're like, but I don't. And then, like, you know, you stop texting them because they're being a bit weird and, like, keep demanding money off of you. And you're just like, but, but, like, I, I don't even want to be with you because <laughs> you don't seem to want to actually be with me. You seem to want to have money. And you're literally saying, I'm saying, like, I have no money. And it's the same chick who's like, oh, but you're so rich and is really contemptive about it. And you're just like, and she's like, I'm walking down in a mall with her after our first date. And she's like, it's like the only date I would, like, I think I went on two dates with this chick. And it's like, we're walking down the mall and she's like, shouting at the top of her lungs to anyone who will listen, basically. Oh, wouldn't it be great to be rich? Basically saying to all of the local Chinese men who are like upset that she's talking to a foreigner because they get really touchy about that as well. Women hanging out with guys that they could assume is their boyfriend and they're, they're not Chinese. That's wrong. Uh, so she's loudly proclaiming to basically no one that she's basically only with me because she's hoping I'll give her money. Like, and it's very obvious that's what she's doing because she's like, oh, I would just love to be rich. Oh, rich. And she's just screaming like this, right? And I'm like, okay, love, whatever the fuck you're talking about, I, yeah, sure. I would like that too. And then I'm like, I'm never going on a date with this chick again. I end up going on another date with her, but like, it's really just a case of like, I'll hang out with her once and we just spoke about like the English language and how she's terrible at it. <laughs> like, you know, I wasn't mean, but apparently her new boss said to her basically, you can barely speak English. And she does speak it in a really jilted way. And it's like, I don't want to be an asshole about it because I'm around people with bad accents all the time. And it's like, you know, I'm not going to, like, I am an English teacher, but I turn it off outside of work. So that was a conversation. But like, every time I've gone out with her, she's been like, oh, well, you're so rich. And she just doesn't pay for anything. And she just expects handouts. And I'm just sat there like, we're not even dating. <laughs> we're not even dating because I don't consider this a date. I don't consider us like partners because you're literally saying to me, I'm never gonna have sex with you until you marry me. And I'm like, well, I'm never gonna marry you because I don't wanna, <laughs> don't even really wanna be with you. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> I'm just like sat there like laughing about it to myself thinking this chick, she thinks she's scamming me by literally holding her palm out and saying, give me money. So I'm just gonna see how stupid she is and push it. You know, to see how long I can piss her off before she just goes, oh, this guy hasn't got anything. Because I've said to her multiple times, I don't have any money. You're a, you're mistaken. I am really poor. And then she's been like, you're, oh, yeah, and like trying to make, keep me by just throwing her, like random adjectives at me where she's like, oh, you're so great. You're so handsome. Oh, my God, I really like you. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm ugly and I'm a terrible person. I'm just using standard millennial humor. And she's just like, um, don't say that, you're wonderful. And it's like, oh, wonderful enough that you actually like, I don't know, act like a fucking girlfriend for five seconds and, you know, maybe hang out with me at least or ever touch me. <laughs> like, you know, she's never touched me, not even held my hand or like even gone near me. And it's like, I can tell she doesn't find me attractive because she just, girls who find me attractive tend to like try and you know make a physical contact even if it's just like touching my body or something or touching my hand or touching my face or like looking at me when I talk <laughs> you know basic shit which is just body language 
uh, and like looking like they care. Uh, she does not care. And when I talk to her, like she's just like real creepy and monitoring, and she seems to think I exist like a monkey in a cage. I lost. It's really weird. She'll text me every couple of seconds going, what are you doing? And then if I don't answer, she's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then like, I work as a school teacher, right? So it's still in this country, predominantly female led. All of them are women, except for like one guy. Aside from me, all of them are women. None of them care. I don't care, but she's going, you went on, you were talking to that girl today, weren't you? And I'm like, you mean the girl who's the TA for my class and the other girl is my boss? And she's like, yeah, why are you talking to her? And it's like, she acts like I'm cheating on her the whole time, but it's like, we're not even together. <laughs> you know what I mean? So she's like the worst, the actual worst. Like, I'm just chatting to her and minding my own business. And oh lord, she is just all the time on my case, and I'm just like, maybe we're not in a relationship, you know? Let's check this out. It's gonna be hard, I think, because these guys, these bikes have gotta be like crazy fast. And I can barely handle S, so. Um, single race on Donington. And we'll just pick one at random. Neil Hodgson or the Troy Bayless. This one has bigger number. Big number, go big. Bad for me, because go fast and I crash. Yeah, it's kind of amusing. Uh, but, like, it's starting to get really tired, because it's like every time I'm awake, she is texting me. And it's like this whole thing of me just like putting my phone down. And if I leave it for 10 minutes and I don't answer it, she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, holy shit. You sound like hell. <laughs> like, you know that? Like, I want to be a dick about it. I said I wouldn't talk about it on my LP channel, but like I am now. Because it's like, it's absurd. It's cartoonish. And it's ridiculousness. I'm just out here like... Well, you know, I don't really, I, I don't care about relationships. I, I want to live on my own, to be honest. It sounds like too much hassle. I don't want to have kids because I work with them, you know. And I'm just kidding. Oh, you just hit me. Meanie. Oh, shit. This is fast. This is real fast. <laughs> no. No! <laughs> oh no! No, 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 let's just, just get distracted by motorbikes. Oh! There we go. Around it. Whoa! <laughs> Suddenly. Speed! Yeah, we're just gonna use our time powers here. It's our world, oh. Oh, stoppies. Not even deliberate stoppies slipping all over. There we go. That's a bingo. Top seven. By which I mean seven. <laughs> top six. Yeah, I'm going to stop saying it. Come on, podium. Bye bye, podium. Boy, Gruber. Oh god, it's Gruber. He's come to shoot the glass. Shoot the glass. No, Gruber. No. No, Gruber. Ah, <laughs> oh, Nakatomi Plaza's dead. It's all Gruber's fault. It's okay. It's okay. We saved it. Come here, Romano. One time I got several of the same name of the AI drivers, so it's like I passed a guy called Brown like five times in the same race and like, he didn't pass me once and I was like, and it was a single race, it wasn't an overtake. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, so that's weird. Do they all have different AI like driving style profiles attached to the name or is it like, 
they're all the same. Because it feels like, look, they're going in tandem on the front there. There's Brown. Hello, Brown and Vert. Oh, I can't even say that. I'm terrible. Um, yeah, so that was... Don't want to be disrespectful to this chick, but she's a bit of a money grabber. <laughs> when she literally says, hi, I like money. Like, she's a girl I used to work with. And like, I literally, I started that job and she left the job because it was too hard for her. And she started at the same time as I did. And she was like, nah, I don't want to do that job. I don't think I'm going to work there. And I was like, you can just say that you were a bad match and they were going to fire you. So you just left and went, nah, I'm just going to leave and not tell them. And then she was there every week after she said she was going to leave and not tell them while they trained her replacement. So they clearly knew. And I was like, yeah, they got rid of you because you're not very good at the job. Uh, she got in so much trouble in the first week. Wouldn't get a penalty timer if I stayed on the track. Which is very hard for a boy like me. Uh, yeah, so like I was having a laugh with it, just seeing how far I could take things and just see like Oh, you're going to try and scam me for money. Let's see how long I can make you believe I have money. And, you, you know, try and get you to pay for lunch and shit. And show me some new places as, like, a tour guide for free. And then I'm just going to get rid of her. And then, like, a couple of days ago, she texted me at, like, 10 p.m. at night saying, Come out now. And I was like, nah, I'm all right, love. I'm in my pajamas, right? You're not that important. I don't chase down girls like I'm not a child. <laughs> like, you know, well, I hope children don't do that either. Um, I don't do that. It's like, you know, boundaries, man. I'm not just going to go, oh, she might have sex with me. I better run. I'm in my pajamas. Probably playing my DS or Doom or something. I'm not interested. And, oh lord. She was trying to showboat me, because this chick as well, I mean, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I'm not telling, I'm not saying her name, so, and, uh, like, you're never going to meet her. Viewer. Viewers. No viewers. Um, but I'm just going to rag about it. Uh, she had one boyfriend in the past, and I said, so, out of curiosity, because she kept asking me a million questions about the one girlfriend I told her about. Um, from my past, and I was like, okay, just out of interest, uh, what happened to your old boyfriend? And her response was, he didn't want to marry me. She had this boyfriend in college. He didn't want to marry me, so it was a waste of time. But, okay. That sounds like hell. I win! Yeah, so that was, uh, a thing. Let me do a 90s one now, because I think we didn't really get to show the 90s because I did most of the 90s and 2K shit off screen. So we'll do what, one of each, yeah? And I'll finish ranting about this chick. Man, yeah, she was, she's just like, she's from a different world. She's like very like, she's almost like a Catholic. She's like, no, no sex for fun, sex for pregnancy. And after we're married, it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> like... I don't want to get married, so... And, like, there's one TA who handles most of my classes, and she has a, for some reason, a hatred of this TA that she doesn't even work with, who's actually her replacement. And, like, when I... When she left... Ooh, North Wales. Um... the 916. Uh, yeah. She... She's got this manic hatred of the person who replaced her, and when this girl started, she said, 
don't forget about me. And I was like, okay. Because, like, this chick, like I said, she's, she was there for, like, two weeks. She handled most of my classes when I was there. And then, like, she left, and I didn't really care about her. I was like, oh, okay, hi. And then before I could get to know her, bye, you know, so you're just like, oh, she's, she's not going to ever be anything. And she started texting me saying, so what are you doing? Uh, all this shit, and started getting really creepy and, like, surveillance-y. And I was like... You know, just trying to get out of the situation. And, uh, yeah, she just, she just would not leave me alone. And I was, like, telling people, like, she's kind of harassing me. And everyone's like... You know, when you're a dude and you're being bothered by a chick, it runs like, oh, you'll just have to sleep with her. She's totally into you. And I'm like, you. <laughs> like, you know, never sleep with your stalker. And, like, you know, I just thought, okay, I'll hang out with her and stuff and see what the deal is. And the deal is really bad. And she just, yeah, is a weirdo. But I can't remember what I was going to say that was particularly hilarious of her. Uh, she's just, like, so nuts. Like... The, the thing she comes out with, you're just like, uh, where would you get that this was like a normal thing to say or do? Um, real weird. Anyway, she, yeah, she, she was trying to showboat me as if I was her boyfriend to her college friend who had just, this is the thing, was who had just been split up with by her ex-boyfriend and was like crying and drinking lots of alcohol and sobbing. And she was trying to drag me out to that, so I was kind of glad that I said no, because she texted me the next morning saying, yeah, my friend was really sad last night, and I was like, oh, why? And she was really drunk, and it was like, oh, why? And it was like, because her boyfriend split up with her, and I was like, oh, so it's probably good I didn't go then, right? And like, yeah. She was just like really shitty with me after that, this chick that like was trying to date me. And I was just like, well, you know, like, it's probably not the best time to be a bitch <laughs> about boys when she's having boy trouble. Like, I'm not even your boyfriend. I was like, I think I'm not even your boyfriend. And then she pulls out the friend zone out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh, oh that's really funny. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Because her friend had boy trouble. So solidarity, we're just friends, you know. And I'm like, mm-hmm, of course we are, honey. Boyfriend when I when it suits her. Boyfriend to show off to her parents so that her parents leave her alone. Boyfriend when she wants money. Not boyfriend when sex. Not boyfriend when she's having a bad mood. So I was like, mm hmm Then on top of that, I don't really want to be with her. Or really want to get with her in a sexual way anyway. So I was just like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, whatever I was trying to see what would happen. Turns out nothing would happen, and I'm probably being a dick for putting it out there for too long, you know? So I just kind of stopped talking to her recently, and she's been texting me like a fucking lunatic. I was like, okay, I'm just going to stop answering her. And it's like, I didn't answer her when she came back from work, and I delayed my reaction to a lot of stuff she said to me. It wasn't just like vanished as if I died. But then I started to peel off really heavily, and she just starts sending me question marks like, I demand a response from you, you're my possession. What are you doing, where are you? And I was just like, okay, you've really put the nail in the coffin now. Like, if the whole friend zoning wasn't bad enough, <laughs> like, you know. Because you sat there like one second, she's like, oh my god, you're so handsome, oh my god, like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm so happy with you, and all of this couple shit, and I'm like, and then she's gaslighting me the next second. We were never anything. You're a fucking lunatic for believing it. And I'm like, lady, I never said we were anything. You're the one who's texting me every five seconds saying, are you talking to another woman? It's like, sorry, I'm, I'm not your possession. <laughs> like, you know, let me get back on track and just let everyone drive by me.
Out the way, Serrano. That was my fault. I did go up the back of him when I could have gone around him. King. Hey, I'm King. You can't have my fake middle name, last name, whatever. I mean, it is a common name. Thompson's also a common name. This asshole. A little more comfortable on the 90s bikes now. Wait, is this the 90s or the 2K bikes? 90s, right? This is a nice bike though. 916 is a nice bike. Can I get this guy or can I get him next lap? I don't get much time at the moment to be doing a lot of LPing and a lot of gaming in general because it's all up in the air with a lot of shit. Bureaucracy, going back soon after this thing, they reckon we will be going back soon. I'm like, oh, okay, sure, if that gets me money, I've stopped caring at this point. Um, probably a bad thing because, you know, I haven't got a vaccine yet, so. But I'm like, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm going to be starving to death waiting for a vaccine it's because, you know, we're the only industry in China that's not returned and everyone's like, oh, we can't return until there's a vaccine. It's like, that's really fucking easy for you to say with your constant salary. The rest of us and the businesses you work for need this. Like, you know. Jackson. Oh, hello, Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson. You will never know. The helmet covers his face. Nice. I like that corner. That was a good exit. This is a bad entry. Okay, exit. Yeah. Let me just get this round to the end. Gonna fuck up now. You tend to like everyone goes by you and then it doesn't let you rewind at the critical moment and you're like, ah. you crash twice in the same frame of time, it won't let you rewind it twice. Which is a weird because in dirt and grid they didn't have such a thing. Joffle meant you ended up using all your flashbacks in that franchise on the same crash. You tried to get out of it five times and kept crashing. Because it was a pretty hard crash to avoid if you were using the flashback often. Yeah, I think I've got this. That's a nice bike. I liked that bike, the 916. It's good. I'm going to do one more from the 2K era. And then we'll move on to something else. Oh, yeah, man. So, yeah, you know. You can retry, I guess. I didn't even know you were actually doing that. That's the first time I've seen that error message. Mm. Oh, there we go. Oh, so yeah, let's do the next one. 
Yeah, man, that was just was a weird time. But I'm glad it's over now. So, yeah, I hope she leaves me alone because I've just been kind of ghosting her. I don't want to be like that cruel, but it's like, you know, you kind of like, after a while you're like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, like, you clearly have some things you need to sort out and I'm not part of it, so bye. All smart. To head. Champion. We just did Road America, right? We don't really want to do it again. This was hard. This, so you, everyone knows that I failed this. We did Mizano. RCS. Um, time attack. Let's try this. I haven't tried the 1098. New things. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't want to be a dick about it, but it's like what's polite and what's endangering your mental health. Nowadays, it's like people, if you have very limited boundaries or you don't really have much of a boundary and you always answer people, people take advantage of that because they think you're a captive audience. And especially on social media, you get some all sorts of toxic bullshit thrown at you. And you're just like, well, I hope it works out for you, sir. Please take your race hater elsewhere. Or please take whatever this misandrous bullshit is elsewhere. <laughs> I don't care. And, you know, I'm thinking, uh, I'm just gonna, like, start ghosting people a little bit. This game is turned, once you get what you're doing, it goes from, like, frustrated at yourself to pretty enjoyable actually and a lot of the bikes are really good fun and that's all I really wanted from this game because I bought it really cheap so uh, I got what I wanted out of it I have to say it is a good advertisement for Ducati in the sense that I've drove driven a lot of these and go that made a nice noise and it felt good in the game that makes me happy but you know it's not like I can afford such a thing so it's like how good is an advertisement to people who don't have the budget? I can just keep this lead, I should be fine. This is this weird chicane here? There we go. Kind of skipped a corner there with the curbs. Hairpins tighter than I thought. Whoa. Try again. Lost a place because of my weird rev malfunction there. Kind of going a bit wobbly all of a sudden. Lucky it didn't come off. You see the bike is rocking back and forth a little bit under its own power when you put the foot down on this one. fresh to throttle on that exit and you can see what happens when I do that. The Serrano is being a problem. No. If I was to give any advice to anybody when dealing with social things, it's like you don't owe a lot of people anything and you need to remember that. Uh, and you've got to think to yourself, if you did this to somebody else, would you expect a positive response if you're unsure, if you're being unfair when people are being toxic or abusive or putting you through something that's a little bit too much for like, for example, if I was dating a girl and I just was flirting with her the whole time and then I was like, oh, I'm not even interested in you. Oh, you're so ugly and all of this shit. And then the next second I was like, oh, got a penalty for that one. That was a cut corner. Um, would that be fair? Would I expect a response from that girl or that girl would just say, oh, all right, fuck off then. 
And it's like, you've got to think that way. It's like, is it fair for you to be doing that to somebody? Would you do that to somebody? I got ran over there, so I'm going to try it again because it's kind of. Oh, this is a bad endpoint. Oh, that was better then. It's a tight corner, that. that is, this is also tighter than I imagined. Keep fucking up these corners. It's because my cat's running around meowing. Right on my ass, these guys. I'm only making a mistake that they just get chucked in front of you and you're just like, Eesh. is that rubber banding or are they just really competitive? AI. They are all on the same bike after all. I don't want to show off the scrambler, but I'll do that next time. Yeah. Other advice I give to people is one that I saw online a lot and it's really helped me. And that's the idea of realizing that this works both ways. No response is a response. If you don't feel like you want to respond or something, you have no social contract saying you have to other than your own politeness. If someone will then blank and ghost you whenever it doesn't suit them because you're asking them a question like, why would you do that and think it was fine regarding something toxic they did? Um, you have no reason not to, uh, to treat them with the respect that they're not giving you. So, you know, for example, if I'm being blanked and excluded from an event, if you then have your own event or you go out and do your own thing and don't invite that person, they really don't have the right to be getting shitty with you. Because it's like, where well, you blank me for shit and don't invite me to stuff and wave it in front of me all the time. You know what I mean? If they're going to be that toxic, then fuck them, you know? Yeah, just made that. He was right behind me, look. <sighs> Wait, I was... I was third? Huh. Could have sworn I was in first place that whole time. There were two guys ahead of me, and I thought I was doing well. Oh, it was the penalty time, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair, that's fair. Okay, I'm going to stop it there, and I'll probably record another part in a minute. But, you know, cut them up, cut them up.